Welcome back to Obscure Tech, folks. It's Bark coming at you in a floppy hat with some floppy tech stuff. Yeah. Let's talk about the phone in the thumbnail. So I'm a mid-range guy. If you watch the Auto Cube video or the uh, Nokia Pure View video, I do prefer a mid-range phone. I don't like to pay a thousand bucks for a phone. If I can get away with sub $300, that's what I want to do. And I have used an absolute ton of mid-range phones. Absolute ton. I switch phones at least typically once every four to six months because I find something that I don't like about a phone. The things I look for in a phone, first and foremost, is battery life. I need my phone to not dial me. I don't want to charge it midday. So I need it to last full day minimum, preferably longer. The second thing I need on my phone is storage. Not a ton, but in 2024, 128 gigabytes is not really enough for anyone, I don't believe. If you take videos, pictures, have any large apps, I think eventually you're going to start feeling the effects of a phone with 128 gigabytes. That's kind of like the base now. A few years ago, 64 gigs was the base, and that's way too little. So I need 256 as my starting point. Uh, the RAM, you definitely want more than four in my opinion. Whether that's six, which is an odd number, or eight, I think eight's fine. I think eight is very doable. I do still want an SD card slot. I do still want an aux jack. I want a headphone jack. I want all these things. I want all the things. The one thing I'm okay with letting go of, which most mid-range phones do not have anyways, some do, but most don't, is wireless charging. I can do without that, especially if I can get a day or more out of the battery. So if it's a phone that needs charge midday, I'm going to need wireless charging because I'm going to want to put it on a wireless charging dock while I'm working or while I'm doing something just for that little bit of a top up to get me through the day. But that sucks. I don't even like doing that. I like to stay disconnected, phone in my pocket, phone in my hand, phone on the end table all the time. What I've discovered, which I'm not the first or last to discover this great mid-range device that's in the thumbnail that you already know about, but the OnePlus Nord CE3 Lite, I probably got some of that mixed up. This phone has been a godsend and I've been using this phone for a few months now and I want to make sure that it was a godsend before I came on here and recommended it as the best mid-range phone for the money. Pound for pound, price, money, all that stuff. I really think this is the one. Now, if you start looking for this device or a device like it, you're going to come across one that looks almost identical to this phone. Uh, this phone is the lime green Nord 3 CE Lite. There is a phone that is just like it in just about every way called the Nord N30. The Nord N30 is basically the same phone, but the highest storage that it comes in is 128 gigs. Whereas the Nord CE3 Lite is the exact same phone, but you can get it with 256 gigs of internal storage, then you can throw an SD card in it and it's dual SIM, dual SIM, but so does the N30. So essentially lime green and double the storage is the upside of the CE3 Lite versus the N30. Now the CE3 Lite is an international version, but a global ROM. So no difference really. I'm on the T-Mobile network. I get 5G. It's very fast. I have no issues. So again, you can get this phone. I got this for 200 bucks. You can find it for about 250, which is the same as the Nord N30. And again, you're getting a lot of great stuff here. Let's show you on screen. Here's what you're getting. You're getting Oxygen OS 13.1. There's our 256 gigs of storage. We've got a Snapdragon 695, which is good enough in my opinion. We got a 5,000 milliamp battery, eight gigs of RAM plus four gigs of VRAM. If you want to upgrade to 12, which that's going to use your internal storage, which is going to cause some wear and tear 
on your internal storage, I'm here to tell you that you don't need 12. Eight is fine for almost everything. The rear camera is 108 megapixel. The front is 16 mega megapixel. These are good enough. Uh, I think the reason we pay for expensive phones these days is to get the best of the best camera. But again, this one's good enough. I'm not going to go through the snaps and the shots. It's plenty good. Android 13, uh, not no update to 14 yet, but this thing is just about as snappy as it could be. You've got double tap uh, to turn on and off. So double tap on, double tap off. The facial recognition is absolutely insane. Facial recognition is insanely fast. You've got a fingerprint scanner on the side here, which you can adjust. You can go to a soft touch. So as soon as you touch it, it pops on, or you can go to a hard click and you click it and it comes on with the fingerprint scanner. But I don't even really need the fingerprint scanner because as you can see here, I'm going to double tap. And just like that, it's on like the facial recognition. I've had expensive phones, the facial recognition on this thing and the speed uh, as to how fast it opens up is like instant, literally instant. I've never had a facial scanner this fast, except for on a thousand dollar phone, premium flagship style phone. You've got uh, one of the things that I was worried about and, and I, I hung on to this for way too long. But the Motorola Edge 2022, I love the feature where you chop and you get the flashlight. Love that feature. I use my flashlight a lot. I'm always out rummaging around the house over here and I, I need a quick flashlight. And the Motorola Edge 2022 was awesome for that. But everything else besides the screen was kind of eh, you know. But with the Nord NEC three five oh six four oh one two seven light c3 light you've got a way to get that flashlight on pretty quickly and that's important to me might be important to you but if you draw a v on the screen it comes on v off off v on v so that's almost as good as the chop to me pretty darn close as far as the fingerprint scanner goes i'm going to press the button now and it's pretty much instant on as well. I think the facial scan is actually quicker. Another thing you may see about this phone and read about this phone is that it has an LCD screen, not an OLED. I'm here to tell you it damn near doesn't matter. The angles and the colors on this phone are fabulous. I almost, almost, I think maybe I do. I think the OLED, you get those deep saturated blacks, but there's something super ultra crisp about a really nice LCD screen these days. They have improved LCD screens dramatically, in my opinion. Now, here's one of the kickers about this phone. Not only do you get a really nice LCD, that Snapdragon 695 and that 5,000 milliamp battery that gives this thing fantastic battery life, the screen refresh rate is also 120 hertz. So seriously, the only drawback to this versus a flagship is you've got a little bit of an older processor. You've got a camera that is more mid-range, but it's pretty solid. That rear camera, the 108 megapixels, pretty solid. So again, let's break it down. You got a 108 megapixel rear cam, 120 hertz refresh rate, 5,000 milliamp battery, the LCD screen is beautiful and helps keep this thing chugging along past a full day easily. Usually I don't even charge it and the next day I'm still on 35% and I can get a whole nother half day out of it. Also have 67 watt fast charging. The Nord N30 is 50 watt. So this, even though it's essentially the same phone as the Nord N30 with the 128 gigs of storage, this will charge faster with the Super Vooch which sounds sexual, fast charging. Basically, I came on here to literally fanboy over this phone. Again, I have had mid-rangers. I've got a Samsung A53. I've had the A71, the Motorola Edge 2022. I've had Google Pixels. I've had, I've had a lot of stuff. And again, I value that headphone jack. Did I mention that it's got dual speakers? So the sound is also fantastic. Speaker here, speaker there 
Most phones in this price range with these kind of specs only have one speaker. So this thing sounds good, looks good, stays powered, 120 hertz refresh rate, 256 gigs of storage, 8 gigs of RAM, plays Genshin Impact just fine on low settings, but still works. This is a beast, a beast of a mid-range phone. And I basically just wanted to come on here because I'm super, super, super impressed with it. 6.7 inch screen, little big for some, but I think a thin case always makes it feel better. So you put a thick case on there, it's going to feel big. But if you go with like a thin frosted case that I got off AliExpress for two bucks, I like minimalistic. I think this is going to be perfectly fine, especially big hand guy here, big thumbs typing on this all day. Fantastic. This phone is a damn revelation to me. I'm always looking for the best mid-range phone. Now, Papa Spurt on TechSpurt, he has this in his mid-rangers of the year for 2023. There's a lot of mid-rangers on there that he loves, and I love that guy. His sense of humor lines right up with mine, dick and fart jokes all day long. This is it for me. If you think there's one better, let me know in the comments, but if you're a mid-range person that wants to spend less than 300 bucks on a phone and get everything that I talked about here and you're not concerned with the deepest blacks, even though they are, they're pretty good anyways. The blacks on this phone are really good. I, good enough for sure. But yeah, this is my phone of 2023. Phone of the year for me, the mid-range guy. But again, I don't spend a lot on phones. So if you're looking for a mid-ranger, don't go for the Nord N30. Look for the CE3 Lite. There's plenty of them out there. You can find it. AliExpress, you can get it pretty cheap, I believe. And yeah, I just now looked on a quick pause. It is still about $250 everywhere. If you're okay with getting one gently used, which Amazon in their use section for this phone usually has one for right at $200. That's where I got mine. I got it used for $200. It came, it looked brand new, and uh, it's it's operated fantastically and the last thing i'll say about this stellar stellar phone in my opinion not one time and this is big because even the best phones sometimes stutter sometimes lag not one time in two months has this thing stuttered or lagged or slowed down it has been snappy and fast from the get-go pretty damn impressive obscure mics phone of the year Nord CE3 Lite. See you guys on the next one. Peace out.